Hi, Mike Zimmer. I just want to talk you through this uh, view of the interactive renderer or interactive re-render uh, from Pixar. This is um, an image that Pixar put together, and we're just going to uh, explain what's going on. There is uh, obviously not much you can see until we put a light in, so uh, the artist is going to put a area light in, and that area light um, is going to be turned up to, say, 11, and now at the moment it's facing uh, towards the back wall, so it just needs to be rotated to face down to light up our car and there we go we can see the car so what's happening here is this is um render man the effectively the 19 version though that term's not used that much uh running in maya this was recorded um, a little while ago in the beta so we can just move the area light around what's really important um to understand is that in a physically based or physically plausible lighting shading type situation area lights are everything and area lights are certainly what i've used uh, to light cars in the past so being able to grab a real or effectively real <laughs> area light and move it in this case i think we're going to need to uh, rotate it around so it kind of lines up with the car is exactly what you might do on set to produce uh, really good lighting um, on a car so as you can see, the renderer is um, constantly updating and constantly improving. If you let it run for a second, it just gets better and better. Or you can just keep uh, editing, say, the lighting parameters up the lighting level. It's a little strong, but let's just leave it like that for a second. Um, what's also interesting is we can vary the color temperature of the light. So this is a 5500 at the moment. We might take it up to 7500. Um, but if we had multiple uh, lights, we could have them all running at different color temperatures, just as you would do uh, in the real world. Um, this is the distribution angle, which is really kind of focusing the area light in much the same way that if I was to put a uh, egg crate um, filter in front of a Kina flow uh, on set, you would get a more directional light. Um, if we take it down to say 20, you can see uh, you know what that would do. But in this particular case, when you want a big, uh, broad area light for a car, you probably want to back up at like 90. Okay, so that's that's showing us the car. And let's say we wanted to make this um, a dramatic car and uh, a more interesting shot. There's a lot of things we could do, but let's start by changing some of the parameters of the car itself. Let's change the base color, maybe make it yellow. Um, and we can uh, adjust, of course, all these parameters and interactively get that feedback in the window um, as it goes, making it red. Let's say we wanted to make it metallic now. Uh, so there's a bunch of things we could do to make the car metallic. Uh, but obviously one of them is actually adjust uh, in the um, settings here, the metallic setting. So I take that up. And right away you're going to get informed much better as to what the effect is going to be. Even though uh, it's still a very noisy image, it's obviously still, if we just take the colour out of it, possible to see almost straight away that this is going to look much more like a kind of a nickel-plated, maybe like a toy car or or certainly <laughs> some kind of Bond-era um, odd vehicle. Just select the camera now for a second. So we've done materials and we've done the lights um, and we can start adjusting parameters on the camera. Obviously depth of field is one thing that's done a lot. At the moment this is being shot with effectively a 50mm, it's about 47mm lens. Um, but we can move the camera, we can of course uh, change many of the properties of the lights. Let's knock that light down a bit to 11 and a half. Um, and one of the really important things, something I think about this, is just how much better I can read what's going on in the top view than this perspective view below it. So as you just rotate the camera around the car for a second and move and adjust where we are, almost as soon as we um, stop, uh, you get a much better reading of how that is going to seem uh, on a final render. And the bottom view, you know, to me looks like the camera might be too low in the perspective view, but in the actual uh, preview of the render, it looks exactly right and that's um, why it's so important to have uh, interactive uh, re-rendering we can move the um, area light back further and you can see that's going to give it a more dramatic effect on the car move it forward um, in the real world of course you tend to light cars uh, based on reflections and trying to show the curves by um, showing uh, light and dark that's you know the liquid metal look so um, having the light off to one side is often a really good way of doing that and thus that shading lets you just read the curvature of the car. So that is reading pretty well, but it is looking a little small and maybe not that dramatic. To make it more dramatic, you'd want to be a bit closer and perhaps on a wider angle lens than the uh, than the 50mm that or effectively we're on at the moment. So uh, obviously you can track the camera in, um, get it closer. But notice as we're just sitting here how much the picture is improving every time we um, just stop. And then, of course, it starts over the second that you touch anything. Okay, so it's tracked in uh, a little closer to the car, which is great. Uh, but the properties of the lens will change when we go to, say, a 30. Certainly in the real world, I'll shoot often with a 50 and a 32mm lenses. They're like very common. 
And so that's already looking um, really good. And this is very important to try and mimic as much as we possibly can uh, with the setup what you have in the real world because it's what people understand and people can intuitively uh, understand. And so even with the noise that's still uh, obviously present in the top view, you get a very good idea of what this is actually going to look like. And all of this is happening incredibly quickly uh, just while you operate as, of course, it's interactively re-rendered.